Ah! I'm sorry, guys. I just had to make that sound because it's like a superhero that sound. So I, I just I thought it was. Not... Let me stop talking. Anyways, back at it again. All right. <sighs> Trading a foreign exchange on margin entails high risk and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not an indication of future results. In this case, as well as a high degree of leverage can act both against you and for you. Before you decide to invest in foreign exchange, you should carefully assess your investment objectives, experience, financial possibilities, and willingness to take risk. There is no well. There is a possibility that you will lose your initial investment partially or completely. Therefore, you should not invest any funds that you cannot afford to completely lose in a worst-case scenario. You should also be aware of of all the risks associated with the foreign exchange trading and contact an independent financial advisor in case of doubt. I am not a financial advisor. I am just a guy who likes to show you things that work on YouTube. Boom. But besides that, guys, I thank you guys so much for all the love and support you guys left on that last video. Um, I let it marinate. I let it sit there for a while on purpose. Um, it's not that I'm not trying to be active. I'm on Telegram all the time, and I'm active on Telegram. If you want to discuss anything with me, if you need help with anything, you go hit me over there. And uh, I'll be glad to answer your questions and help you to the best of my abilities and help you understand what maybe I understand. So I discussed how I was going to make a video on weekly profiles and how I anticipate weekly profiles. Um, and we're here. So let's begin. Um, first off, too, I, I would like to also thank ICT. Thank you, ICT. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here. Um, but of course, I have experience, and that is what ICT did not teach me. That's something I taught myself. So I'm going to teach you guys how I, with my experience, how I see the weekly profiles. And uh, we're going to use, obviously, ICT concepts. That's who I learned from. So I'm going to uh, refer to some of his um, some of, some of his information, but just know that I do not take no right or ownership of none of this information. This is just the market. We all share this stuff, so it does not matter. Um, all right, so first things first, I like to have a weekend, Saturday, and Sunday indicator on. It's not really so much of an indicator, but um, it's more of... Um, it just lets me know Sunday's price action. So like whatever is in that blue box that you guys see here on my screen, this is just Sunday's price action. So for me, everything that happens inside of this blue box for me is just random. I don't trade it. I don't care about it. Uh, for me, this is not there. <clears throat> so that's that. Um, we have here the previous week's low. So one thing I like to do is I like to look, did when we open in this new week on Monday, are, did we rate a certain high or low? Um, specifically, what high or low? Is it the previous week's low? Previous week's high? Is it a previous day high? Previous day low? Is it the last monthly or is it a monthly low or monthly high? Those are things I like to look at. And so what I do do is I anticipate, I anticipate that once we raid that low on Monday, right? If we raid that low on Monday or raid that low on Tuesday, what am I anticipating? I am anticipating a reversal. Listen to my words carefully. I am anticipating a reversal, right? And so sometimes it's going to be clear. Sometimes it's not going to be clear. It's just things that you have to adjust. Sometimes it will clear the previous week's low and then go into a PD array, right? And off that PD array, we wait to see what price action does there. And then we act, all right? So. This is how it starts. So for this week, for an example, I know that all this stuff is hindsight. So we raid this low. What low is this? This is Friday's low. This is at, actually at noon on Friday. And we raid that low. And then you see that price on Sunday just goes lower, 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 lower. And then Monday, we open down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for, you guessed it, a fair value gap on the higher time frame. I'm trying to see, okay, where is price likely to reverse from and why? And so here we have this fair value gap here. This is our fair value gap right here. And keep in mind that this is not always going to work, but it will help for sure. I cannot guarantee you results. 
So we have this four hour fair value gap here. Price takes out these lows here, relatively equal low sell side liquidity. We come down into this fair value gap. That to me is a classic fair value gap. That is a perfect scenario when there is stops right before hitting a fair value gap. And then we go into that fair value gap and then we act from that fair value gap. We see what happens. So biggest thing I like to know. So I tell myself, okay, we're now trading in this four hour fair value gap. What am I expecting? Well, if we rated last week's low, I'm expecting what? Bullish prices. Where are we in the range? We're clearly in discount. So for me, I want to know where is the possible, well, where can I possibly enter um, and be sure of me catching an opportunity, a range of opportunity. And so using the same idea here, if we're looking for longs, right? And prices and discount in the range, there's a four hour fair value gap. It's bullish. It's a bullish for our fair value gap. What am I going to say? Well, I'm going to say that we're looking for market maker buy models. But before we could just even try entering, we have to understand where is the drawn liquidity? Where is price likely to reach? What is price likely to reach? And what are we likely to go for? In the sense that if we're expecting bullish prices, I need to find a area where I want to see price go to due to its liquidity that rests there um so with that being said i'm going to point out a specific range and it's this original consolidation here this would be my original consolidation the biggest hallmark that i love about this specific original consolidation specifically is that right above this original consolidation, so we have a low resistance liquidity run, and right above this original consolidation, what do we have? A fair value gap. This is amazing. So we're gonna draw out this fair value gap. This is the one hour fair value gap, right? And we're gonna draw out this fair value gap here. And this for me becomes a high probability fair value gap, or I would say an area where prices likely to draw. So I'm confident in it because there's an original consolidation and low resistance liquidity run and there's a fair value gap. This is classic. Once again, classic stuff. So one of the biggest things ICT always states is that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is likely to form the high of the week or the low of the week. Precisely Tuesday will create the low or the high of the week 70% of the time. And um, this is all discussed in this YouTube. This is not me spreading nothing that has to do with mentorship. This is all for free online. So if you guys want to understand it more in debt, you guys go to his site or his YouTube channel. I'm just here trying to spread the message and try to give people clarity. So like I've said before in the last video, I want to see a shift in market structure. So once we fully, fully right here, we fully rebalance this fair value gap, which is one of my rules. We then have a shift in market structure here. Price has a shift in market structure. It shifts its gear. So once we break above this high here, it goes from bearish, what once was bearish, to now bullish. And notice how we took out this specific low here. This low is what? London's low. And we take this out here. And potentially, if let's just say that seven o'clock opened down here or New York opened up opened up down here and we rated this there, and it was seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, ten o'clock, then this would have been a likely, or how would I say this? This could have been an opportunity for you to go long here and try to catch a, a little nice bullish setup here. And you could have got anywhere from 10, 15 pips, 20 pips. I don't know. But for this specific example, that does not happen happens around noon on Monday. And that's when price decides to fill in this fair value gap. And then that's when, you know, this range is filled. And so it's already late in the day. So I, I just hope that you guys are not trading after 12. 
I wouldn't do that. Um, I don't do that. But if you want to do that, or if you find confidence in doing that, and you've seen results off that, then go ahead, do that. So we get the shift in market structure there. And then let me see. Um, let me just turn on some of these couple, some of these things. Let me just put it out here. All right, so cool. So now we have the shift in market structure here. Price then comes back down. Where is our entry going to form? Where do I want to see a market maker buy model form from? So if you were a little aggressive here, like I said, um, you could have bought this really. What I would have been interested in is buying this during Asia. This would have been very, very, a very nice setup to buy during Asia. That is a kill zone. So if you're going to look to trade Asia, that would have been from 20 to zero. And it gives it here. We fill this in again, once again, and then we go up and then we have this aggressive run there. So that could have been your market maker, uh, your market maker buy model there. But specifically, I'm looking for a fair value gap and an order block. Um, fair value gap is more prominent to me, but if I find them together with an order block and a fair value gap, then I'll, I'll refer to that. I'll refer to the order block. So what happens is here, we have these two down close candles. These two down close candles could be a potential higher time frame order block. Me, I ignore that. I look at the lowest down close candle, which is here. This would be my candle. So this opening price here is the candidate for me to go long. And so it has to happen during New York also for me. These are just certain things that I like to see um, because I trade the New York kill zone and the New York kill zone only. So we have this for value gap here after the shift in market structure. Sounds familiar? Absolutely. This is what we talked about in the last discussion. I mean, in the last video, and this is pretty much how this model works or my interpretation works. So once we have that shift in market structure, I'm looking for the exact fair value gap. So in the range where, in the range before breaking or before shifting market structure, was there a fair value gap? Was there, was there an imbalance? Yes, the imbalance was here. And there's also a order block, it just happens to be there. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look to potentially capitalize off a, maker, a market maker buy model off this order block here. And what are we targeting? We're targeting this original consolidation here that is beautiful specifically because there's a fair value gap on top of it. And so therefore, if there is a area or an imbalance above an original consolidation, this is the sauciest original consolidation you could possibly ever try to uh, have as your terminus. So I'm just going to go down to a 15 minute time frame and we're going to try to refine. And what I mean by refining is we're going to find a very, 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 very tight entry. Uh, for me, I like to be extremely precise. So entering off the one hour, there's nothing wrong with that but I don't like entering off that. For me, those are just higher time frames. Uh, it just gives me a level of interest of where I wanna enter. And so once we see this here, and we go down to a 15 minute, you start to see that we even have a smaller, I mean, not a smaller, but a lower fair value gap. So I'm going to now focus my attention. We're gonna take this box here. That was once a one hour fair value gap, and we're gonna shift our attention to this right here right there. And I actually took this trade. It's actually my telegram. So you guys will see it. So I just don't do this and then say, oh, you know, this is how it works. And uh, just follow it and study it. No, I actually trade these things. You know what I mean? So if you go to my channel, you'll see this exact same setup. I didn't put the uh, chart up, but I, uh, I just put a screenshot of my entry. And um, just a trade of running in like 20 pips in profit, 30 pips in profit. Cool. But I got in here on this right here. So biggest thing is here, we have this rally gap here. If you were aggressive, you could have bought it here or you could have waited until you saw another shift in market structure. Here we have a short-term high. We go there for a value gap is left behind or to block. And this becomes your entry here. And notice how this is a market maker buy model right here. I'll show you why. We can see it right here. 
Smart Money Reversal, <laughs> the original consolidation, reaccumulation here, reaccumulation here, reaccumulation here, reaccumulation here, and prices continues higher. You could have paid yourself a bunch of times here, a bunch of times. This is a 25, 26 pip range. If you would have bought it down from here, look how this same thing repeats again. We have a fair value gap with an order block. So then I refine here. This is where I would be entering. And then boom, price comes down there. And once you see this, you could buy there with your stops right below here. And this is how we really try to keep our stop losses small um, in return for higher risk to reward trade setups. Um, because I, me since I'm a scalper, I don't like to really frame or frame my uh, take profit and stop loss from the one hour. I like to just keep refining down to the smaller time frames. And so, as I said before, we're understanding the weekly profile here, right? So once we have this here, all this price action here, we raise these equal lows right here. And we're also filling in this for value gap here. Anytime price came to this discount here, you could have been a buyer any single time. Now, I do suggest that you buy it during or inside of a kill zone because that will give you the safest um it'll give you the highest probability. It'd be the safest way to trade that if you were to trade that. Um, and that's that. And so we have that here. You could have bought the previous day during Asia and you could have went long or you could have waited till New York, how I did. And then you get this here precisely at these levels. And then once we have this for Valley Gap order block, I'm going long here. And so the whole point is that just because Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday creates a low of the week doesn't mean I want to be trading exactly on Monday. Doesn't want to what doesn't mean that I want to be trading exactly on Tuesday, Wednesday. It doesn't doesn't matter. What matters is the price action and delivery that you uh, see here. And so the premise was that there was a shift in market structure. As we're filling in this fair value gap, we're also taking out London's low. We have a shift in market structure. Price comes back to this fair value gap, order block, and we're looking for a market maker buy model to form. And so what I want to do is catch the lines of the portion, uh, the, the lines portion of the week, the weekly range or the weekly candle. I want to catch a big portion. It doesn't have to be the absolute low or the absolute high. It just has to be a good meat on the bone, as ICT says it. So it's going to be like the middle of the range. Right, so then we have that happening here. And so once you get this here, you can easily target 50 pips and you're done for the week. This is exactly how I trade one shot, one kill. And I'll take a majority of my positions off at the 50 pips here. And then I will let the rest, I'll let runners run until my terminus is hit. And what this does is guarantee me a way for me to pay myself. At 50 pips, I tell myself, once I enter, and this is 50 pips here, I'm going to pay myself at least 60, 70, 80% of the portion off, and then the rest will continue. And so then you can carve out another 25 pips with a runner, and then that runner turns into a nice extra bank. So we could go on to another week. And we could look for the same things. Eventually, price, of course, we come into this original uh, original consolidation and we go into the fair value gap. And then you used to see price moving along here. And then this in here also offers more market maker buy models because price is bullish, right? Original consolidation, small mini reversal, fair value gap, shift to market structure, fair value gap. Oh, this is where I want to enter. Time of day. 10 o'clock, New York. Oh, I could buy that. Absolutely, you can. So then you would ride that, and this would give you another possible 30 pips. You could live with 30. But that's that's an amazing trade right there. So we're going to go to the next week. Um, 
Well, the previous week, I would say. And we can go to another pair. It doesn't have to be specifically this pair. Let's go to NZD USD. And I'm going to kind of do the same thing here. So let's just go out to the one hour. And what I'm going to do is, okay, cool. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And these blue lines, of course, are Sunday's price action. So you don't even have to worry about that. So let's just come back to this here. So this is Friday, by the way. So this is Friday in here. So like I said before, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday will likely create the low of the week. And what I'm looking for is previous week's high, previous week's low, previous day's high, previous, uh, previous day's low, or monthly high, low. You know what I mean? And so here we have this previous week's high rated there specifically what day tuesday right so this lets me anticipate what a reversal i'm looking for a reversal because we've cleared the previous day's high and we're deep in premium and there's an original consolidation or sell side liquidity below and that would be here, or even the week, the weekly low, which is here. And then of course we get that there, which is cool, amazing. But I want to be trading throughout Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Basically I wanna be trading when the high is being formed. I don't wanna catch the absolute high, but I wanna catch a, uh, let's say that there was a shift in market structure. So let's just say that this right here is the high of the week right here. So we're just going to put a little yellow box over it. And what I want to see is price to give me a reversal. I want, I'm anticipating a reversal. This is last week's high. And what day is it? It's the day that price is likely to make the high of the week, which is Tuesday, 70% of the time. And then I'm going to find reasons to go short in here. Can this create a market maker sell model? Absolutely. But first things first. I want to check, is there a fair value gap as to why price came into here? And so we're going to go out to my favorite time frame. The four-hour fair value gaps for me is the Swiss time piece. So here we have a fair value gap here, right there. We have a small gap. And then when price comes into here, oh, what do you have there? Exactly that. Your market maker sell model or your smart money reversal exactly and we're going to anticipate reversal from this exact point and on and i haven't really talked about it but i want it to happen during new york because why i only trade new york i only care to look or i only care to trade new york so what i want to be doing is i want to be entering when new york gets up to here so i love the fact that new york we have this range here and then we're just hovering under hovering below this fair value gap so then we have this consolidation this range here and then as price is going into the nine o'clock time ten o'clock time we hit exactly the four hour fair value gap and what are we anticipating a market maker sell model right we're in premium the draw liquidity is lower we have so many confluences. Look, we have this original consolidation right here. We have this imbalance here. Price eventually has to rebalance that. No? Correct. So it's Tuesday. We've raided the previous week's high. Uh, Tuesday is likely to create the high of the week. And we're also anticipating our market maker sell model to form inside what? The four hour fair value gap. And so then, boom, what happens here? We have this. So the same rule, I don't know if you guys paid attention to that first video, I love when price fills in the entire range. It gives me confidence. A lot of the times you'll see is that the fair value gap will be hit to the 50%, then there will be a reversal. Sometimes that happens, you just have to know when it's gonna happen. Like I said, I cannot give you those details. I don't, um, I can't necessarily share when price is only uh, might fill in the 50% or the entire range. But let's just stick to a simple rule. Do not try to deviate from it. It's very simple. 
wait for the entire range to be filled. So we get that here. This four hour fair value gap gets filled. And now you could potentially sell it here at the tippity top, or you could wait for a shift in market structure, then your nearest fair value gap, and then you could enter there and life is good. And so here it is. So in this case, specifically here, you do not, and I will repeat it, you do not get a shift in market structure with a fair value gap uh, type of thing, but you could trade any retracements into a fair value gap. And what do I mean? So anytime price returns into a fair value gap, you could be a participant as a seller. So for example, let me just give you guys a little, little, little preview of what happens here. So we have this candle closing right there, right below that premium level. We tap the premium level, this high. So let's look at this coordinate. It's exactly at 703.40. The high of this candle comes in at 703.40. Is that a coincidence? Random, maybe. All right. So then price goes here. The next candle opens. What you want to see is price come below or give you a reaction. And where's our shift in market structure? Where would, it, where would it occur? It would occur right here. And I, I want you guys to pay close attention. If we zoom in real quick, these, I'm not going to consider this candle because it's a doji, but these four candles that really have the volume in them, these candles to me become a bearish order block. And so once we validate that and we go below this, we close below it, this becomes a valid order block. So let's just have our focus here now. Price comes in here. Anytime we have an imbalance, you can fade it. So this candle breaks lower here. What do we create? An imbalance from where? From here to here. This is where your imbalance is at. And this entire red box this is where your imbalance is at. And focus more on the bodies. If the next candle opens up and returns up into this imbalance here, you can fade it. This is more aggressive and it takes a lot more anticipation and skills. But if you truly believe that this is the high and that price gave you the reaction that you wanted, we validated this order block here. There's an imbalance not created. When the next candle forms, if it comes up into this, you could sell it. So we have this candle here. So when the candle initially opens, this is all bullish here. And guess what? In here, I would sell it. Like here is where I am stacking positions. I am entering short. And you're going to hear my, if we were on MetaTrader 4, you're going you're gonna to hear it. It's going to be doom. Boom. You know that little sound it makes, that little, shh, you know, whatever it makes. I don't really know how to describe it, but it makes the sound. It's like a swish. This is exactly what you're going to hear. I'm swishing, swishing. I'm getting in there. Multiple entries. I'm doing like at least three in here. So because I understand that, number one, we fill the range. And this is a key point. We're in New York. Exactly. This high was made specifically during New York. And what is that 10 o'clock specifically? London close. And then we have this reaction here. And both these candles close below. We tap it, but we close below the fair value gap. And then we see this immediate reaction here. And then we have this imbalance offered there. Price comes up, you could sell it there. You could sell it here, you could sell it here, you could sell it here. Then the next candle opens. Where's your next potential area to sell it? Well, now we have all of this. This is now my entire imbalance here. So then price just keeps going lower and keeps attacking until the point where it doesn't even offer you any entries back up here, which sometimes that will happen. Boom, we have that there. And like I said, this now becomes your imbalance. Anytime price returns up into this imbalance here, you could be looking to sell. I specifically want to sell at the 50% from this candle's low 
So this candle's low right there with the body. And if anything, or if any candle retraces up in the 50%, I'm looking to sell that imbalance. Sell out that imbalance right there. But then again, these are very aggressive. Price comes there. I think we go above this high here into this valley gap. This is your entry. If you miss this one, you can go short here with this candle. And then another thing is also we have a fair value gap here. And we close below this fair value gap right there. We return to it near the premium. So here you could be selling, 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 selling. So what is the context here? We have a fair value gap that was disrespected. We close below it. We return into it. Once we return into it, we're going into the premium of this fair value gap of this range inside of this imbalance of this candle right here. And then that could be your cue to go short. And then you get these reactions here. Then price returns back almost to the discount, missed about a few pipettes, but this is an order block. This could become a high probability order block because why? Because this order block here gets validated with this candles here. We engulf it. And then what we're doing is we're going to trade pretty much the 50% because that's where we have the most amount of confluences. We have the discount level of this for value gap. And we have also the equilibrium of this order block, the mean threshold. And that could be your point for shorts. And then when price comes in here, you short it again. You short it again. And so that's pretty much how it works. And so you have two chances to enter there. And where you're targeting, you're going to target the, of course, original consolidation. And your original consolidation is here. When price delivers in this form, in this manner, quick and aggressive like this, they're not going to give you a lot of opportunities. But if you do get in here and you're more of an aggressive trader and you're not waiting for the retracement, oh boy, oh boy, this is an amazing range of opportunity. And I don't even trade NZD USA, but look, this is 35 pips. In the matter of like what, like 10 minutes? That is amazing. So this is 10.04. This candle is at 10.14. Yeah, 10 minutes, you get that aggressive response there. And so now, price comes low here, and then we still have this objective here. So now we could seek for more opportunities later on. Same idea here. When this candle forms here, this is an imbalance after we rate this low. We have a fair value gap in here. Now let's talk. Let's just say, well, why won't you wait till price comes up into this fair value gap up here? These ones right here. Well, you have to ask yourself, is price officially or inefficiently delivered inside of that range? And I want to give you guys a specific specific look on it. So what makes a range balanced is when both sides are offered. So what are these sides? There is buy side and sell side. So we have here where? Buy side. And then also here we have sell side. So everything from here to this low and beyond here and down here. So like, uh, let's just put a box over it. All this price action to me is efficiently delivered. Believe it or not. I do not care for price to go up into here. I'm not saying that it can't, it can. But this is my experience and this is how I see the market and how I would capitalize off entry in here. And so kind of the same idea, I'm gonna to try to find a fair value gap that got disrespected. Where's this fair value gap? Here, we have one right here. And let's change this color because we have that red line there too, it's just too close. So we're gonna make this little one here blue. And then we're gonna go into this low right here. And this is a fair value gap, but then price closes above it. So if we were to return into that, you could potentially look to short there as well if you missed all this in here. And let's just say also, 
we're nearing the 50% of this range from this low to this high. So you also have to be very careful. You're still in premium, so you can still short it, but try not to uh, have a high trading frequency in the middle of the range or near the middle of the range. Um, don't really look to make, you know, jackpot from that specific point. Um, you want to be trading from the deep premium or deep discount. Those are going to be your high prob your highest probability trade setups. Now, if you're trading like this, just be mindful that you're going to have to have tight stops and this is an aggressive way of trading. But sometimes aggression is necessary to learn. So I would still look to take this low out here and most importantly, fill these imbalances because price could always, could also always return to just the original consolidation. It could just return to the original consolidation, does not have to sweep it. So there's only three things that are guaranteed in this fractal of a market maker cell model. It's the original consolidation, smart mean reversal, return to the consolidation. And when I mean return, it could sweep it or it could stay above it or below it, whatever the case may be, but it does not have to rate it, all right? So then price comes here and look how the next handle opens. Remember what I just spoke about. This here is an imbalance. So we're gonna have this right here from this low. So this candle's body's low right there. If we focus on the 50% of this right here, this becomes what? An area for me to enter. So right there, boom. So I'm going to look to have my entry there, my stops, five pips maybe. And then we're going to look to trade into this fair value gap here. And right alone here, this is a six, a one to six risk to reward ratio. Um, so this is not a bad position at all. We also have some lows here, some liquidity there. But my focus is here, original consolidation and balance. So let's just see this real quick. Price opens, next candle. It hammers into that premium side of that fair value gap above the equilibrium of this imbalance here. This is where you want to short it. And eventually, of course, you get stopped out, which is fine. Um, sometimes that will happen. And this to me is more of manipulation. Just look at this can't this wicks, this wick alone is like 10 pips. That's just manipulation. You're gonna have to deal with it. But just pay attention to the bodies. I really want you to pay attention to the bodies and just look at where the bodies are closing. They're closing, number one, inside that fair value gap here that's pointed out. And they're also closing exactly at the 50% there. And then, boom, we get that reversal point. Now, obviously, you got this. You're going to have to withstand that. This was probably news. It was probably news around this time of day. Um, I'm not going to look and try to investigate as much as that. But all I know is that your entries come here. And then if you're a person who stop loss would have been like above there, like 10 pips, you like to do 10 pips or you have like a fixed stop loss, then this would have worked out perfectly for you. Um, if not, then no. And then price goes over here. Once again, we have a imbalance again. Where's the imbalance coming from? From this candle's low to this candle's body's low right there. That's your imbalance. So if price opens there, Oh, and look exactly what it does. The wick comes in there and then we fall down. See how it happens? And look, happens here again. We have this candle here. All of this is an imbalance right there. From there to there. Again, 50% from here to here. We're waiting for the next candles to open or wick into this and we're gonna fade it here. We're just gonna sell it because the order flow is bearish. The original consolidation is below. And when we see this form, we're just gonna sell it. So for me, right there, I'm shorting it. Once this candle closes right there, I'm shorting it. Okay, cool, cool, cool. We have this order block here. So this is probably something, oh, look, I didn't even see that. Look, there's a small fair value gap in here. So, and an order block. So yeah, this could have been your possible entry to go short. And it's some, for some reason, just randomly goes back up to this, into this uh, fair value gap here. And then we just keep going lower. And then once again, imbalances, you just fade them anytime prices here. So 
right there. Uh, let me see. We have this imbalance here again. Price opens, closes below it. We could sell it there. There's a fair value gap up here, so it might go up there. So yeah, we have this fair value gap there. Comes up into this. And then price starts playing around that level and we just keep going lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. Another fair value gap is formed right there. You could short it there. Me, I'm gonna follow the same rules. I like to wait till this is fully filled in at least. So for me, it's that. Uh, we get to that. Okay, cool. Price comes into this one here. See, I'm not even paying attention. I'm trying to do this so fast, but yeah. So this will be your fair value gap in here, actually. And we have that there, but you guys get the point, though. I feel like I'm just so zoomed in into the actual candles that it's not allowing me to really see it. But there you go. Then you get these reactions here. And that's just how about I go about trading or trying to pyramid off these fractals. If I can't get a entry up here, I'm going to look to capitalize off those imbalances here. Fair value gaps, order blocks that are formed along the way and fair value gap levels that are disrespected. And like, we could just draw these fair value gaps out all the time. Here we go. We have this fair value gap here. Fair value gap here. And notice how price, when it comes down here, we just stall around these levels here. Same thing, we're just gonna keep drawing out these fair value gaps. We're gonna keep them drawn out. Um, here you go. And just look how price really just plays around these levels. We close below, we return up to what? The premium side of the fair value gap, this fair value gap here, and then there's a fair value gap in here. You could short it there. And then eventually raid the original consolidation. But, once you train your eye, you're able to capitalize off multiple positions or multiple areas of entry. Um, me, like I said, I have a rule where I don't really like to stack positions nearing the equilibrium of the range or nearing terminus. I really want to just be focused on entering if I'm going to stack any type of positions at the premium end or the discount end. And that's that. So if you do anything besides that then you're likely prone to getting stopped out like these little wicks here they're gonna get you so if you have like very uh, tight stops they're gonna get you uh, sometimes you can uh, get lucky with two three pip four five stop losses and you'll have a successful outcome most of the time though if you're really forcing it and pushing it it's not a good idea and you're just gonna burn the profits if you're involved in here you're just gonna burn your profits from up here and you don't want that unnecessary losses um, there's no need for it. Uh, I have a good friend of mine who tells me that you get paid for your decisions, and it's entirely true. So um, that's that. So then we can look at the previous weeks before. Um, notice how this here gets rated. What day is this? This is the previous day's low. And again, I want this rate to happen during Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Is it happening during these times? If it does, um, inside of these days, I'm going to anticipate a what? A reversal. Notice how we have this here again. The same phenomenon, the same phenomenon occurs. We have Tuesday breaking below Friday's low. This is Friday's low. <coughs> and then I'm anticipating a reversal. Here we have it. And this forms a market maker buy model from here. Inside of what? Fair value gap. And then if we go out to the five minute, can we find a shift the market structure type of entry back into a fair value gap? Can we do that? And the answer to that is, let me see. Sorry guys, sorry about this. Uh, let me just use this right here, cool. And so all this here is balanced, right? Because we have sell side delivery, Buy side delivery, we go above this shift in market structure. We have an order block here, fair value gap. 50% of that order block right there. You could be look, you could be looking to be a buyer there. If you miss that, cool. Once you see that we break above structure here, closing above this, 
when we come back down, you could be a buyer back inside of this range of this order block. Or if not, as I spoke to you before and I told you about imbalances, you can simply look at this candle. When this candle forms here, what is there? There's an imbalance from here to here. So I'm looking to be a buyer. Anytime price fades into this, I'm going to fade it the opposite direction. So it will come down here as a down candle. It will show up here as that. It will open, deliver lower, and then I'm buying it there as it's fading. So boom, that candle right there. You could be aggressive, enter hella positions in there if you want to do that. And then boom, we get that aggression there. And look at this again here. Just to show you guys, this is an imbalance, correct? From here to here. Obviously, there's imbalances in here. If you're not comfortable in doing this, you don't have to do this. But this is just a way that I like to uh, trade aggressively sometimes when I'm trying to get in the move. And it gives me, it gives me, when it, when it goes in my favor, it gives me great, great, great opportunities. It gives me like super, super tight risk, uh, a super, super tight entry, uh, like perfect entry and a super tight uh, stop loss. And then your entry would come here. And like, let's say you want to be like aggressive with it. All right, let's do like five pips, five pips stop loss. This could be your stop loss right there. So just in case price comes down into this, you could account for that. Um, or if you wanted to go even below this, it's fine there as well. So you can have like a seven pip stop loss. And if it comes into there, boom, that's your entry. And then look how candles just expand higher, higher. And then we have another fear value gap. And this is just price spooling higher, going higher. And that's how I trade if I have to force myself uh, to find an entry. And it's not that I'm forcing myself. These are just things that happen over time. I have experience with them and they work for me. So doesn't mean they have to work for you, but that's just the way I like to enter. So I give you guys a, I give you guys a new outlook on how to anticipate market maker models based around weekly profiles. And I also give you a new entry technique and it's something that you can study on your own time. So if you check it out, most definitely you will find a lot of success in that. So anyways, we raid that previous weeks that or the previous day low here. What I'm doing is I'm anticipating a reversal. Why? Because this is Monday, Tuesday. What happens? Lower high of the week is formed on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Boom. There you go. And at what time of day I want to be trading specifically during a kill zone? You want to see that low form. So this smart money reversal happens exactly at what time? At three o'clock. What is three o'clock? Ooh, the heart of London. So price then has that shift in market structure. You could enter this order block here with this fair value gap, and then that would get you this. If you miss that, then you enter here when price returns into this fair value gap or this imbalance, and then it just goes away. You can enter here, here, whatever you feel comfortable with. And what are we targeting? An original consolidation, right? And back to what I was saying before, the highest, 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 highest probability original consolidation is the one that you know that will get targeted. Number one, they have to be a low resistance liquidity run. So how this high here is higher than this high here, that is a low resistance liquidity run. When price has that there, that specific call mark, we're looking to target that as a drawn liquidity because it will give you low resistance liquidity run. And then how I just told you guys before, if you can find for some reason, if you like, I'm going to go to the higher time frame, more higher time frame, 15 minutes. If you can find a fair value gap above this range here, that even gives you more confluence as for you to believe in it more or have a higher probability of your drawn liquidity. So here it is. I have that original consolidation with a fair value gap above it. Price eventually reaches into here. And then we have like this little pause in here and then price just keeps going higher, of course, of course. Those are things we can't anticipate. But can you pay yourself or can you go, or can you catch a good portion of the weekly range coming into here? Absolutely. This is roughly around 50 pips. If you had caught the move from down here, this would have been 50 pips for sure. If you would have caught it from here, obviously you're, you know, 
the closer you get to your draw liquidity, the less you're going to get as a range of opportunity. But like I said, always try to get down, always try to get in in the deep discount or deep premium. And as we have it here, this would have gave you a perfect 40, 45, 50 pips here. And that would have been about it. We have an order block there, even better. And so the premise is that we have an original consolidation with a fair value gap above it. And this is just a classic way, a classic original consolidation or a classic opportunity to enter off that fair value gap. Hmm. I'll leave that to your own study. But anyways, <clears throat> that's that. Um, go back to this previous week here. So we're just going through data here. It's not much of, it's more of a rinse and wash and repeat for you guys so you guys can understand it. So it could just be embedded in your head. Um, let me see. And so again, I'm looking for the same thing. So does Tuesday, it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday offer or raid that low of last week's? Obviously Sunday does it. So hint, hint, this was the first example I showed you. So if Sunday raids that, just expect price to go a little lower. Where is it going down to? Let's go out to our favorite, favorite time frame, And let's try to find a four hour fair value gap. And so you have three candles here. You have three fair value gaps here. Um, this is not my intellectual property, but a good birdie, of, a good friend of mine told me that uh, the middle fair value gap is always of importance. When there is three like this combined here, I would always look to, or I would always refer to the middle fair value gap. And so you get that here. And what are you going to expect off here? If we're opening, well, if we rated the previous week's low, these lows over here as well, um, I'm going to anticipate a reversal. We're opening up in discount Monday, Tuesday. Wednesday creates a low or high of the week. This specific point here, we have the low forming. And so once you have this, you can anticipate a reversal. And what is your entry technique here? Same thing, smart money reversal. I mean, uh, smart money reversal, shift the market structure, fair value gap. So notice how we have a high here. We have that shift the market structure there. This is a change of state and delivery. It breaks above these bullish order blocks. What does that let you know? That lets me know, hey, price is not going for buy side liquidity. This is all YouTube stuff. So we have a fair value gap in here. We draw that out in time. You say, but isn't that fair value gap already filled? Whoever said that fair value gaps expire? Um, boom. We have that there. That is during what time? Uh, what during what kill zone? This is obviously during Asia. If you like to trade Asia, this could be a perfect setup for you, and you could go long. And obviously, it pays well here. And also, you got to keep in mind this is an NZD pair. So NZD, Aussie, JPY pairs, they tend to move during Asia a lot of the time. So it is not it is not low probability if you see the low of the day. Uh, going into the next day being formed during Asia. So the low forms here, and then we just see price goes all the way, all the way into premium. But if you had gotten this position here, you could have held on to this, and that would have been great. You missed that opportunity in here. What happens? We have this imbalance here. So again, let's just keep practicing. And mind you, this is all happening on all these time frames. This is not random. We have an imbalance here. What we're going to do is, if price doesn't have an imbalance below and everything here has been efficiently delivered, what I'm going to focus on is this imbalance in here. Does price give me a possible entry? So we could even go back to the previous candle, which is this one here. So look, you have this imbalance in here. Let's just put this over here. This imbalance in here. Price comes in what? Comes down into that, and then you fade it. Here we have an imbalance here now. This candle's high to this candle's body high right there. 
boom, you could be a buyer there. See how it opens? You could fade it. The context is there. We're bullish. Came from a fair value gap. We have the shift in market structure. This could all be opportunity. And then you have this candle right here. Now this becomes in imbalance now. And then you can look to long it as well. Again, when it faded, yep, you fade it right there. So sometimes you're gonna get that beautiful, beautiful entry. But what I do is I wait till it hammers it a little bit and like stalls into it, like stalls inside of it. And then I'll enter when I see like stalling inside of this imbalance and then we get that. And of course, price could always come back down to this because there's still an imbalance fill, uh, to be filled in. You have it again, price just continues higher, 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 higher. And look at this again, we, we get these right here. This right here is an imbalance. Price can come back down to here with the wick and then you're just going to fade that and you're gonna buy it right there. Boom, buy it, buy it again. Buy it again, buy it again, buy it again. And wow, manipulation gets you there. But just to save myself <laughs> from all the trouble, this is, of course, uh, outside of our kill zone. So I'm not even looking to trade. But like, for example, this 9 a.m. candle here, this could be an amazing opportunity. If you're a person who's very uh, nimble on your market approach, like if you're a scalper and you look for 10 quick, uh, quick 10 pips, 15 pips, this is an amazing opportunity. So I would have bought it here. And we possibly would have paid ourselves at 10 pips. We get the 10 pips, 15 pips, 20 pips. This is literally how you build a consistent approach. Like you don't even have to be right. You don't have to wait till price goes into the original consolidation with a fair value gap. You don't have to do none of that. You can literally just scalp 10, a quick 10, 15, 20 pips, and then do that. Now, if you're a person who likes to hold, uh, you know, to receive the entire risk to reward ratio, I also understand that. But I don't do that personally. Uh, I just, you know, try to i trade more in sense of velocity and the fact that um if i can keep capitalizing off 10 pip ranges 15 pip ranges 20 pip ranges um how many of those ranges form in a day right many and if i also wanted to focus on other pairs i could also focus on other pairs and uh, there'll be other pairs to offer that as well so 10 pips is not hard it's a very 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 small pip objective um, but still can be challenges, right? So let's just say that you framed a risk to reward set up, well, a risk model that allows you to capitalize of 10 pips. So what I'm trying to say is a one-on-one -on -one ratio, as ICT has stated before. Uh, if you wanted to literally do one-to-one -one trades, you can be challenges all it, like you can. I personally don't like trading that way. I like to look for two, two to ones, three to ones, four to ones and above. But you could even do one on ones, and that is enough, right? So let's say um, I'm gonna risk one percent to make one percent. You could trade that way. There's nothing wrong about that. And I feel like, uh, not that I feel like, I know. Um, when you even discuss risk risk reward ratio, you have to start with one to one, anyways, right? So that's how it even starts. So if you know that you have these tight positions here, where you're Stop loss could be, you know, struck very easily off this imbalance in here. I'm going to do that quickly. You could do that quickly. You could do a, a, a 10 pips, 10 pips stop loss for, for here. And then you could do a 10 pip stop loss here. And who's to say that that doesn't make you profitable? Absolutely, it does. And you're risking 1%, you make 1%. Do this 10 times. That's 10%. Do this 20 times, that's 20%. Obviously, it's easier said than done. But for those who are nimble and actually, um, they actually see the potential in this, they can obviously capitalize off this. And you don't have to go crazy. You don't have to wait till the original consolidation gets hit. For me, all the time, I'll tell you guys, I'll be honest with you, the original consolidation for me is the best case scenario. If it happens, boom, amazing. But if I could capitalize 50 pips, 30, 40 pips before I even hit, my terminus, my uh, drawn liquidity per se, why the heck am I gonna have 100% of my portion of my trading size, my, my trading volume on the, on, the, on the trade 
if I can literally pay myself 80% and I've already made X amount of money, I've already made an X amount of percentage, right? Because we don't even look at money anyways, but I've made an X amount of per, uh, X amount of percentage. Why do I have to force myself or force price or demand price, demand my will that price goes to that original consolidation? Because this is what will happen. A lot of the times you'll have this entry here, entry here, right? And then you'll just keep trailing your stop losses and you will be wicked out of the position. So let's say you were probably possibly up let's say $2,000 and your uh, stop loss is here, right? Now you only profited because it hits your stop loss. You only profited $700, $800 versus when you could have profited and pay yourself as price was going up and you were at like the 2000 benchmark. Like what's the problem with that? That's 2% on $100,000. That's 2%. So for me, and most of us are taking this uh, funded route uh, I also have to remind myself, and I, I do fall victim to like my greed and stuff like that. So don't think that I'm perfect. I'm not perfect at all. But I'm just, what I'm just trying to say is that if you are doing a challenge or even if you're trading live and you just want to go in small increments and just have velocity and just growth, simple compounding, you could simply do two setups a day. Look for two one ones That's 20 pips in one day. If you're trading, if you're risking 1% on it, you made 2% if you win one, if you win both right? Obviously, you have to be comfortable. You, you have to look, you have to know what you're looking for. This is uh, surgical strikes. It just can't be you, Um. oh yeah, I'm just going to just buy it here and have 10 pips stop loss in the 10 pip. No, no, no. Like it has to be very precise when you're trading that way. I feel like if you're trading with a one-on-one -on -one and you're doing things like that, it has to be somewhat precise. Um, And it's like this, right? Or you could just have huge stop losses and huge tps you could do that as well you could have like a 30 pip stop loss or you and you could have also a 30 pip take profit that's up to you but me i'm not doing that that's disgusting to me but that's what it would be um so there's a bunch of things you guys could uh grab on from here um i hope that this video was insightful i'm going to head out um again thank you so much for the love and support and just keep showing love and uh, it will motivate me to continue uh, to grow this community. And uh, it's been your boy and I'm out. Bang.